Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we will present the Solo Swan model, uh, and named after Ro Robert Solo and Trevor Swan. So this model explains long-run economic growth in a neoclassical framework. So to clarify terms here, uh, a ne neoclassical framework uh, simply means an economy uh, that is populated with um, rational and maximizing agents. So they, they could be say, firms or consumers or workers and uh, where prices are driven by supply and demand. So these assumptions are fundamental for most uh, economic models. So the main ingredient uh, in uh, the Solution model is the capital accumulation. And we also introduce uh, population growth and technological uh, progress. Mm -hmm. uh, so we say that cap capital accumulation is endogenous. Um, by this, uh, we mean um, that so it is endogenous because it's something that we want to explain within the model. It's something that we care about. Uh, in contrast, uh, we are going to add population growth and technological progress, but uh, we're, we say that they are actually uh, exogenous. So it just means that they come from outside the model and we don't really care about what causes them. We just postulate that they each uh, grow at a certain rate each period without having to say why. Finally, uh, another exogenous variable that will be important is the savings rate. Uh, the savings is the fraction of uh, the output that the uh, agents or the citizens or the consumers choose to save in the model, uh, which allows them actually to invest and produce more capital. So the solo uh, swan model is the backbone of growth theory. Uh, it's the starting point of many others, more complete growth models. Uh, so for instance, the uh, ramsey kasman model uh, makes uh, savings decision endogenous. Also the Arrow, uh, Uzua and Sidraski model uh, make technological progress endogenous. And also uh, Paul Roman, Paul Romer has made human uh, capital investment decision endogenous. So he actually got the Nobel Prize uh, in 2018 for this work, along with his work for uh, uh, environmental models. Uh, finally, the Solo Swan model is even a starting point for uh, um, the study of short term business cycle fluctuations, even though it's uh, actually meant to describe long term trends. So you can really see how fundamental it is. Uh, so to make it uh, easier to understand, I have decided to start with a simple version of the model with only capital accumulation, and then to go on to introduce only population growth and then only uh, technological growth. So we start with solo, uh, the solo Swan model with only capital accumulation. Uh, it is, of course, a funda fundamental variable to understand if we want to understand growth. Uh, so it played a central role in the Industrial Revolution with the steam engines, plants and vehicles. And uh, the, its accumulation underlies many of the Caldor facts. So to clarify, by capital, we mean any uh, object that can be even so tangible or intangible that people can use to uh, gain production or gain revenue. So countries uh, who started accumulating capital became vastly wealthy compared to others. Uh, as you can see uh, on the graph, it really looks like uh, countries who do have lots of capital are also the ones where workers produce the most. Uh, so is that the secret to growth? Um, for developing con uh, countries, would just starting to accumulate a very large quantity of capital be the secret uh, to uh, catch up to rich countries? Uh, so before continuing, uh, I invite you to pause the video and think about this for a second uh, and think about the, the economic uh, um, mechanisms that might help you under, uh, explain this uh, or understand this phenomenon. So this plot is similar to the previous one. Although we now look at changes over time, did country which uh, invested uh, more over the period 1975-2009 actually gain more in terms of GDP per capita? 
If that were also the case, then uh, it really would really look like capital is the key to growth. Uh, so the relation does look slightly positive, but quite weak. Uh, moreover, it doesn't look like uh, most rich countries uh, invested a lot. They, uh, it, they are all bunched together in the center and uh, at about 20% of their GDP uh, on average. Uh, so what's, uh, what's actually going on there? Is capital important or not? Uh, so it's a very multifaceted problem. Um, and with problems like this, uh, a good, uh, good thing to do is to step back and try to frame the uh, problem in simpler terms uh, to, get some in, uh, to gain some intuition. So this is what good researchers do. Uh, they don't really know uh, the answers right away, but they're very good at inventing uh, useful abstractions. So uh, here's my own proposal. So uh, let's imagine that capital is uh, potato plants and uh, the production is potatoes. So what can you do with your potatoes? You can either eat them, that's consumption, or you can use a, a, a fraction of them and plant them so that in the next years you get new potato plants and you're able to add new potatoes. So that's reinvestments. Um, so the question is, can I plant a very large field to have a huge uh, amount of potatoes? Um, so in that uh, very uh, toy uh, simple toy model, then the uh, answer is obviously no. Uh, why? Well, because I'm by myself. So let's imagine I don't have uh, many tools. Uh, so uh, I can't cultivate uh, successfully a, a huge uh, amount of potatoes in my fields because some of them are just not going to, uh, to, to uh, survive because of pests or the sun or whatever. And to replace them, I would have to use most of the potatoes I gain every year just to plant them and uh, uh, keep, uh, keep up with my huge field. Uh, so in, um, I just don't have enough time to care for them. Um, so it really looks like there. Uh, uh, I can't have an infinite amount of potatoes. There is uh, there is some uh, optimal amount of plants. If I have too little, then yeah, I uh, I could uh, I could maybe plant more and have more. But if I have too much, then I will just lose them and waste them. Uh, so what's the solution for me? Uh, how can I be richer? How can I eat more uh, if, if we exclude uh, trade or other factors? Well, one thing that uh, farmers uh, used to do is to have many children so they could uh, help them to work on the farm. Uh, that This would allow uh, us to cultivate more. But of course, this also means more mouths to feed. So if uh, we don't care about total production, but we care about uh, being rich, uh, well, it's uh, not a necessarily a step in the right direction. And actually each new uh, child that uh, is born would necessitate for us to plant this, that year more potato plants just to feed that new person. So in fact, population growth may even be uh, uh, less good for, uh, for, uh, uh, if we wanted to uh, eat, uh, eat a lot. So there is actually one good permanent way to raise my standards of living on my farm. Uh, what is it? Think about it. Yes, it's better technology. So it's better tools, it's to have a tractor. Um, so th there it is. That, that's uh, in a nutshell the, the secret behind the, the solo model. So, uh, and that, that's, I re basically spoiled the, the answer uh, at the end. Of, of course, now what we're going to do is formalize the model in the following slides.